Hey everybody, this is Intuitive Anthony doing another YouTube video. I'm sorry about the graininess of it. The lighting in this room is terrible. It doesn't do anything for me. Like, um, I want to thank everybody for the wonderful response I got for the um, Oprah Winfrey video uh, about her trying to destroy the legacy of a black man as long as, as uh, along with Gail King trying to destroy R. Kelly. Not that there's nothing there. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that because I think that's a whole separate issue, but it shows a pattern. Instead of the white man going after a black person, they use a black face to go after a black person. It's just it's it's black on black violence, but it's regulated by the system. Um, so apparently there's a lot of people out there that feel as strongly as I do about this. Um, I did not honestly. I was a little fooled in the beginning of Oprah's career by her. I mean, during that time, that's when The Color Purple was out. Everybody was doing these slave movies. You know what I'm saying? And Hollywood really set those movies up to be the narrative of black people, period. That's why in high school, they asked only go back. You were a slave. You were a slave. Little did you know, the Bible, that book is written about us. They've always known this. So Oprah's from one of those generations with the older people who kind of, they're from the Martin Luther King, let's hold hands, let's kiss ass, let's get along. That's where they're at. I, they, they, they're made to take orders. They're not made to give orders. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're made to work up under somebody and have somebody over them. They're not made to think for themselves. Oprah is a part of this shit. She's a part of that generation. She's a part of that generation that go, you know, Oprah don't believe in God or, or whatever the hell it means. She calls it the energy of the power or some stupid shit. See, that's what money do to people. Money make you dizzy like that. Okay. Apparently, I'm better than everyone in the world. So now I got to find a new way to do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So... With that sense of inflation, oh, well, it came down from the corporate office that I need to do this. Personally, I have a problem with it, but I have to do it in order to keep my job. Not realizing she done made enough money. She don't need to make any more money. But what they did was they set her up because, come to find out, I watched a video years ago when OJ was acquitted. She had Mark Furman doing an interview with Mark Furman, the known racist cop, who was confirmed and, uh, and is proud of the fact that he was a racist. And this bitch sat up in his face to talk about O.J. Simpson, no matter whether you think he did it or not. A house divided can't stand. If you're a black person and you brought a racist on your show to talk shit about a black person, bitch, what do you think he thinks about you? So that lets you know she's looking at somebody who hates her, hates her skin, hates everything about her, and hates all her brother in the same. But she don't care. And this is the sad thing about Hollywood. The world is changing now, and Hollywood tries to mirror what it sees in the world, but really has no idea about it. Like right now, the current state of the news is not the fact that all black people are waking up to the fact that they are Hebrews. They are the true Hebrews of the Bible, not those other people. So all these black people, all these black kids coming up now are sitting, having to go to church every Sunday, sit up in, sit up in church Sunday and look at these black ladies wearing these white usher uniforms, looking up at a white Jesus on the cross, giving money to send to these people who are not even the people, while these same people put images of you out in Hollywood like Oprah Winfrey and shit like that to tell you you are nothing but... You are nothing but a crew worker at McDonald's. You will never be the boss. Stay in your place. And she's more than happy to do this. But the same shit that she don't realize is the same way Hollywood strategically chops down black artists. At the same time, they're going to chop her ass down. And this is her calling card. Like, she done pulled all her tweets and her YouTube stuff off. Honey, you're not walking away from this. We seen the monster on the other half of that face. We seen what it really is. The game is over. So now 
It's going to come down from corporate office. Oh, yeah, I've been terminated. Yeah, we don't need you no more. Because you were only good to pass our messages on to the people. We can't use you anymore. And let me, oh, you know, another thing that really gets me. Oprah, if you are so mortified by sexual abuse that you could try to conjure up a dead man and destroy his legacy, one of the only few black artists that have maintained their music and the music of others. If you're so worried about sexual assault and abuse, why haven't you done a show about those girls getting raped at your school in Africa? Or was that just a publicity stunt? So you only care when it can get you ratings. So, and this is what kills me about a lot of philanthropists. Oh, I give to charity. Most of the fucking time, they give that money... They doing that so they don't have to pay Uncle Sam. And by them giving it to the charity, by the time it reaches them kids in Africa, a big-ass box of food comes down to two green peas. That's all it is. They doing it so they don't have to give it to Uncle Sam. And I'd rather give it to some. I'd rather spread my money out between the shipping, the distributors, and all of this shit to get to Africa so that all my money is not going to one place, one person, one system. So they don't want to give it to Uncle Sam. They'd rather chop it up and send it that way because by the time it gets to where it's going, there's nothing left. But it's a love of money. It's a den. Hollywood creates this shit. But see, the thing of it is, is Oprah thought, oh, I'm not black anymore. I'm Oprah Winfrey. Bitch, you black. You're very black. And not one of the most attractive ones on top of that. Now, don't get me wrong. Big girls are pretty, but she ain't it. She ain't it, she ain't it. with the droopy eyes. I'm happy. I don't have time for that. So, the same thing that she's doing, and she knows she's being played, or, or unless she's very, very stupid and doesn't know anything, unless she's really, really stupid, and she's just a mouthpiece for the puppet master to stick his hand in and say what he needs to say to the masses. It could be either one of those. It very well may be. But they're going to do the same shit to her. They're going to do the same shit to her. And the, sh the thing that it is, it's kind of like the uh, the Cat Williams with Wanda Smith. <laughs> with Wanda Smith. that l The same things that she's doing to these the legacies of these people is the same stories and hateful, vengeful articles that are going to come out about her with the Lane Bryant outfit. The whole she belongs as a Lane Bryant model kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like the same thing that she stood on a platform for, I'm showing that big girls can do it. Fine. But be sincere in what you're putting out there because the same shit that you stood on a platform for, those motherfuckers that told you to do this shit, know your weaknesses. Know your enemy. So they're going to play with you for a while. They're going to play with you like a puppet on a string. Okay, this puppet ain't fun no more. I want something else. So what they're going to do? They're going to start cutting them strings. And so all those things you stand for, sexual assault, they use this to cut that string. The Michael Jackson situation, bitch, you don't care about sexual assault. Because if you did, you'd be trying to find out what's going on in the school that you started, ho. Oh, being big and strong, they're going to cut that. But they're going to cut it in a way where it doesn't look like they're attacking you and side shaming you. They're going to come at your weaknesses. Either they're going to try to feed you and feed you and feed you and really make you a grotesque sight to look at or they're going to start putting out stories that insinuate shit about your appearance weight and shit like that because they love you now oprah, oprah, oprah couldn't do any wrong she's so great she's so fucking phenomenal no bitch your time is up it's over you need to tally up your sheets bitch because um this office is closing Grand opening, grand closing. And, slow, you know, I never really, I was never a fan of Oprah. I never was like, oh, God, I got to get home to watch Oprah. I know Peggy Bundy did on Married with Children. But Oprah used black people as her pla as her, as her base. Then when she started getting Oprah Winfrey kind of money after Michael, after Michael gave her that interview that put that Sasquatch in all our living rooms because everybody wanted to know. Remember, when Oprah came out, she was going to, they, everybody wanted to interview with Michael Jackson because the black community was the post behind that. Because I remember, I remember the place I was. 
I was going to get my hair cut. And I was on my way into the barbershop. And somebody said, you know Michael Jackson White. I said, what? I said, that's not possible. <laughs> you can't do that. That's impossible. No. So I went into the barbershop. And in the black barbershops, you know, you got the old dudes in the back talking. And you know the pictures of the haircuts on the wall. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and there's Ebony and Jet Magazine, right? So you sitting there. The whole place smell like alcohol from the clippers and shit. Somebody sweeping. So I picked up the magazine. And lo and behold on the cover was Michael Jackson. Where he's sitting like this with the panther for the black and white video. And I looked at him. And my eyes got this fucking big. I was like, okay, I didn't know we could fucking do that. Little do we know, he had a skin condition that aided that shit along. You know what I mean? I didn't, hadn't even really heard about that. And, and needless to say, I have a cousin in my family. When she was little, she had vitiligo and it started in her face. But her mother had to quit her job and put this cream on several times for a period of time to keep it from spreading. But that's beside the point. So Michael had transitioned from black to white. Skin wise, and everybody wanted to know how in the fuck is this possible? You mean to tell me your money that long? Where it's like I'm here one minute, hi, my name is Anthony, and I'm from such and such. You completely changed who the fuck you were. So everybody wanted to see this interview because Michael Jackson was the interview to have. Because everybody in the world wanted to know how did you go from a black man to a white man? So when Oprah got the job, boom, you got 90 million people who know who you are. She took that shit and ran with it. It was all fine and good. But then, the same way she did O.J. Simpson and having Mark Furman on there, which said that you cared more about demonizing a black man than you did about sitting here looking at a fucking racist in your face on your show and with your people and you using your financial resources to promote a motherfucking racist against your own kind. Okay, you got to be able to stomach a lot of sick shit in Hollywood. I'm going to tell you like that. Because real people don't last in Hollywood. Real recognize real. And Hollywood is all about lighting, sets, Makeup and plastic face, titties and ass. I'm going to tell you like this. You too real, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. But Oprah had apparently been drinking the Kool-Aid at um Harpo and all these other fucking places she got. Oh, I'm Oprah Winfrey. No, bitch, you're not. So when you had the Oprah Winfrey show, you catered to the black women. Then once Michael Jackson interview took off, now your show is full of white women. Not because you deliver. I think it's because your money had gotten so long, you no longer cared or identified with the struggle anymore. Oh, I made it. I'm out. I'm this. I'm that. So I don't give a damn about nobody but me. I'm Oprah Winfrey. I'm not black. I'm Oprah. Okay, bitch. So when you came out with the network, every damn move, every damn thing she was doing on the own network. Oh, he raped me. He abused me. It was just rape, abuse, child abuse. It was just all kind of heavy subject matter like the Tyler Perry movies. So what they do is what she did was she triggered things in the black community that she could get it to resonate with them again. So she used the black people in the beginning when her show first talk show first came on. Then she got white. She started a new company. So she went right back to her core base. And then once she started coming up, now there's different types of shows for everybody. So what she do, she repeats the cycle. Now I'm going to go after another black person. But bitch, you bit off more than you could chew. You bit off more than you could chew. Because you know what? I'm going to put it to you like this and I'm going to say this. And I might get a little bit of flack for saying this. But truth is true. If you're looking at, say you're white. And you've been oppressed all of your life. Let's just say polar opposite. Opposite day or whatever. And throughout, you know, you interacting with other groups, you've never come out. You've never came out on top. Your people have never come out on top. One way or another, you got screwed in the end. So you have, you have somebody that comes out and defies the odds and makes it. And actually comes out on top. 
Now you got a bunch of people who are pissed off. So I can't go, I can't as a black man going to take you for you having a white person that was really, really successful. So what I'm going to do is get, I'm going to get another white person to interview you so that they can give you this, say the stuff to you that I really want to say, but they won't, the audience won't see race. They'll just see a conversation between two of the same people. But at the same time, I know what's going on on that set. You know what I'm saying? This is what she did. But she got to that point where she was so Oprah Winfrey. She didn't realize that fucking with Michael was on the level of civil rights kind of shit. Because Martin Luther King, you know they still say shit about Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King came on a platform of we should all go to school together, drink from the same water fountains, kumbaya, kumbaya. The new generation of kids ain't with that program. We done tried to be nice. We done tried to be we done tried to be easy about it. But you ain't listening. We ain't playing no more. You know what I mean? There's only so there's only so far you could push a person. You know what I'm saying? And this new generation coming up sees these people, like these black people in the church with these white, you know, they not, they don't understand it because if these people, if a group of people treat you a certain way for so long and you tried everything in your power to make peace with these people, and you still can't get no peace, why in the hell would you still stay on the bottom? You have the ability, you have the talent, and you have the brains and the resources. All the stuff they said you didn't have is turning out to be false. Nobody moves like black people do. Nobody has the level of athleticism. They're great inventors that came from the black community. You got Black Wall Street. That was destroyed by the U.S. government. Remember that or go look it up. Yeah, they destroyed Black Wall Street. Before there was a White Wall Street, there was a Black Wall Street. And they destroyed it because they didn't want too many black people having power. It's ugly, but it's true. And so, all of this stuff is going on now. She knows. She's like, okay, I'm Oprah Winfrey. I'm going to get away with this. So she went after Michael. Martin Luther King, let's all get along. Michael Jackson said, no, I'm going to play your game, but I'm going to whip your ass at playing your game. You created the game, and I'm going to sit down. Now, I know this deck is stacked against me. When you go to a casino, you think everybody win that play? No, because you know losers is what's going to keep this thing going. Is my glasses crooked? What the hell? Okay, anyway. Um, losers keep that business open. So, he, Michael, being a young entertainer, he made a little bit of money. But Michael's like, I want to go from here to here. Michael also grew up in the industry, so he knew the game, and he knew how they spit it. But you know what old people say? Well, I know old black people say, but other people might say too. Never let the left hand know what the right hand doing. You talking to these people over here, and you saying what you want in your dreams and your goals. That's okay. But if that's all you got going for you, eventually they're going to chop, they're going to put a roadblock on every last one of them dreams. And this is what you want, but you got another hand that's got a whole nother set of priorities going on. That's what Michael had. Now, Michael, now at his craft, ain't nobody fucking with Michael. Let's be real, okay? Michael Jackson can walk on stage or pop out of the floor and stand there for 10 minutes. And you got 20 people on stretchers in the back. He could just stand there. Like, I'm about to give y'all ass what you came for, but you gotta want it. So, when Michael, he was on a whole nother level type shit. That's why Hollywood is still so pissed off and so mad at him. Because Michael Jackson beat them back. That's why you don't see them promote Michael Jackson like they do Elvis. Remember during the time, I guess, I, I wasn't old enough when Elvis died. Well, I don't know how old. I don't know when he died or whatever. But when you the music stores used to be in the mall, when people actually used to go to the mall, there would be the music store have posters and shit. They always found a way to put young Elvis up in there. But if there was a music store today, Michael Jackson wouldn't be on the wall. Like they're trying to ban him from the radio station. They're trying to hit this man and take because when Michael died, he died on having all the money he got while he was in Hollywood plus more. Artists are supposed to die penniless and broke. Michael died with his shit and everybody else's too. So, 
Michael took them and beat them at their own game. So why this man is dead 10 years and they still trying to mess with him? It's because anger is a bitter bitch. Anger is a bitter bitch. And they never going to give Michael his credit because every time they look at him, they're going to be like, damn, he fucked us over. And Oprah must have thought she had enough clout. Uh, silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids, honey. Because Michael had been in the game. Michael didn't get signed until he was like six or seven. Michael had already been on the Chitlin Circuit tour. They had, them, them boys have been touring since four and five. Joe had them boys working. Get busy living or get busy dying. One of the two. So there was a lot of stuff about the older black generation that was good. That was very, very good. Like, and then you got the bad part. Where it's kumbaya. Please let me into your club. Please let me fit in. I just want to be one of you. And that shit never ends well. It never ends well. There's never been a situation where black person was like, please let me into your little club, and it went well. Oh, you're going to very soon find out that you are not one of them. But Michael played the game in public, but when it all came down to the end, and they was like, okay, let's put this guy back where he belongs, Michael wasn't having it. <laughs> so when Michael left this earth, he left owning everything. So now, only thing they can do is try to hit his estate. And if you're a sleep person walking through this world, you're going to take whatever they give you and run with it because you're too lazy to do your homework. But this situation is one where Michael left taking all of that with him. He owns it. Michael is on a level that no black person, no black artist is on. Like, and so Oprah, you thought that your pie face, I don't know when she became famous, I don't know, in her 20s in Chicago or something like that. So you mean to tell me, you've been in the industry for a little while, this nigga fed you and gave you your platform, gave you your um crossover appeal, and you think you could, you got the juice to take him down? So this lets you know this man been in the grind, this man has been gone for 10 years. And you still can't fucking touch him. You know how airtight your shit gotta be for the fucking FBI to do an investigation on you and find nothing? Run up on trial and get off. And, and, and get and get acquitted of it. I don't want to say get off. Get acquitted. And you still died owning everybody's stuff. And Oprah, you think that you can run your slot machine ass up there and take him down? Oh, this is about to get good. I'm just going to tell you like this, y'all. Her removing her YouTube accounts and any references to Michael Jackson and the Twitter feed and all of that stuff. She's getting ready to get canned. It's about to be a lot of slow singing and flower bringing for Oprah Winfrey because she's lost her core. Her core base fans are gone. So I want everybody to have a moment of silence for Oprah. This has been Intuitive Anthony doing another YouTube video. Remember to hit like and subscribe, guys, and I will talk to you later, okay, guys? Keep Mike alive.